Welcome to this demonstration of the Southern Photonics FLS100 fiber laser, coupled with Finisar's 1 micron wave shaper. In this video, we will demonstrate the functionality of the wave shaper using Southern Photonics laser source. The system is coupled with a GUI written in MATLAB that has been developed by Southern Photonics to work specifically with the wave shaper using the FLS100 fiber laser. Here on the left, you can see the autocorrelation and the OSA output from the wave shaper, which will show the effects of this in real time. The GUI has several functional similarities to the Finisar's Wave Manager program. You can block the spectrum coming through the wave shaper using the Block All button. You can transmit all, and you can build various filter profiles limited by the selection here on the right. You've got pulse shapes in the time domain with options for square, Gaussian or parabolic pulses. You have options to flatten the phase. You can attenuate your spectrum and you can create double pulses. And you can of course center your pulse anywhere within the spectrum of this laser and also change the bandwidth. As you can see, we've just got the output of the laser running straight through the wave shaper at the moment. It's uncompressed, so it's actually coming out with an autocorrelation of 21.2 picoseconds. You can see this on the left. The laser produces a linearly chirped pulse. That means it can be compressed using a grating or a linear compressor. You can actually perform the compression using the wave shaper, and we'll show that a little bit later in the video. Initially, let's have a look at some of the filter options. We can build a square filter here, which will shape the spectrum in such a way that we'll get a square pulse in the time domain. You can turn the phase on or off, so you can see what the phase is doing across your spectrum. If you have the Plot Phase and the Plot Amplitude button selected, you can see that you've got an input spectrum in blue, You've got the output amplitude that you're going to shape in green. You have the filter amplitude, this is what's being applied to the wave shaper in dashed red. You've got the output phase in black. And you've got the filter phase in dashed pink. You can see that for a square pulse you get an alternating phase of 2 pi between the lobes. With the Gaussian pulse, the phase is just flat across the spectrum. Likewise, for a parabolic pulse, you get another alternating phase across the spectrum. So let's shape a Gaussian pulse. Turn the phase off. We'll make a 5 nanometer bandwidth pulse, centered at 1030 nanometers. We can see now that we've applied it, and the spectrum on the OSA reflects a nice Gaussian spectrum. I'm going to have to change the autocorrelator sensitivity so we can see this. You can now see we've lost a little bit of power because we've shaped the spectrum, but we've also compressed the pulse a little bit because we've only selected the central part of the spectrum. We've now got an autocorrelation of around 8.8 .8 picoseconds long. We can change the bandwidth of this pulse, which shows up on the OSA. We can also change the central wavelength of the pulse, which again is shown on the OSA. So we'll just go back to a 5 nanometer pulse, centered at 1030 nanometers. You can now see a nice Gaussian spectrum there and a nice Gaussian autocorrelation. We'll shape a square pulse now, and you can see that the spectrum shows that we are shaping it in such a way that we should have a square pulse in the time domain. Likewise, we can perform the same shaping to get a parabolic pulse. Just hit Apply, and now we should have a parabolic pulse. As I mentioned before, you can actually compress these pulses using the wave shaper, so we'll just go back and transmit all through the wave shaper, and we'll select Flatten the Phase. By applying a very strong phase mask through the wave shaper, 
unfortunately you do get some amplitude effects coming through. So you suffer an additional 10 dB of attenuation when you flatten the phase in this manner. So we'll go ahead and apply this phase flattening filter to the wave shaper. You can see we've now flattened the phase and the shape of our spectrum remains pretty much unchanged on the OSA. Now you can see the autocorrelation is very short, so we're going to have to change the settings on the autocorrelation to show exactly what's going on. We'll just reduce the scan of this and turn the sensitivity up. So you can see that now we've flattened the phase, our spectrum remains unchanged, but our pulse has now become very short, and we have an autocorrelation of around 400 picoseconds long. This is because we've applied a parabolic phase, as you can see here, through the wave shaper to compress this pulse. By simply checking the plot phase option, we can see that by applying a parabolic phase, we get a flat output phase, and our pulse compresses. You can also do this to the Gaussian filters, so you can compress your Gaussian pulses themselves. We'll just change this again. This is a compressed Gaussian with a bandwidth of 5 nanometers. You can see that it compresses down to an autocorrelation of around 650 femtoseconds long. We can do other nice things with this GUI. We can create double pulses, so we can generate two pulses separated in time by a certain amount of picoseconds. We'll split this Gaussian into two pulses, separated by two picoseconds, and go ahead and apply that. Again, we've lost some power, so we will have to increase the sensitivity and increase the scan range. Now you can see we've got an autocorrelation and an OSA that shows that we've indeed got two pulses separated in time by two picoseconds. You can change the separation by any amount of picoseconds you want, so we'll just double that to four picoseconds. And in fact, if we increase the scan range on the autocorrelator, we can go so far as 10 picoseconds and even out to 20. You can see now we've got two pulses separated by 20 picoseconds. The OSA is having trouble resolving the peaks, or the combs, in the spectrum when the pulses are separated by this amount of picoseconds, but you can see that the autocorrelation trace definitely shows that we've got two pulses, and they are in fact separated by 20 picoseconds. Thank you for watching this demonstration. For more information, please contact Southern Photonics or Finisar. Thank you.